Greetings, got a goal back again with a new video. Um, it's been a bit since I've done a tutorial on how to do portraits. Um, also in um, kind of, I don't know if it, you should say celebration or maybe because of the proximity of the other event that happened recently that I finally came up with a new project. Um, it's on the Cold Steel World where the Kornilov affair basically takes over uh, Russia in that timeline. There are other stuff to do, but today I'm not going to go into the lore. I am just trying to present to you the best way I can how to make the style portrait that I'm doing. Now, this also is for my developers who are, um, they are, are good at portraits, but I've noticed some of them might have been gappy, but don't worry um, if any of you are a developer and are watching. Um, don't worry, this will help you. So, first things first, is that in order to make a portrait, you have to do a setup. And this is found in my resources, the leader background, uh, portrait background dark. This one is a like a grayish thing. I'll leave a link to my resources in the description down below. It should... Um, give you all that you need. I also will need to update on a lot of stuff. So the stuff being that um, in order to add the portraits in and stuff, you need the right resources like this, so I would recommend getting this. Um, but this could also help in other aspects of portrait making as well. It is TNO based, but it's got this it's got this polished feel to it. Now, I also would like to make this very clear before I actually start is that in order for this portrait to work, you have to go for high quality portraits. If you go anywhere that is subpar or very pixelated, it's not going to look good for your portrait. And um, the two kinds of online tools that I would recommend is Nightmare AI and Remove Background. Now, no, this is not a horror-themed <laughs> website. This is something to clean up your portraits if they are that bad. Now, this doesn't always help. Sometimes you have to fiddle around with Photoshop stuff. I might show you throughout this. I might actually make this into a two-parter, so... Bear with me as much as you can. Um, this is the remove background. Obviously, you'll need it to actually input a portrait. Once you've polished it up, once it's set up, then you can just place it in. Um, also, what would really help is uh, references. Now, I do have something to help you guys along as well when it comes to actually making the portrait's position. Because the portraits themselves are, I guess, uh, they are framed in a very specific way. So this could also help, but I also have this to help as well. They are basically keys um, to help you along. Although personally, I would use this one because, well, I've been trying to follow this principle as much as I could. So now you don't have to like be very strict and follow this all the way, although it is uh, recommended for the best kinds of quality otherwise you'll risk you know having one thing over there and having another thing over there just I would say position it the best way you can that's all I can say so let's let's begin now we need an example of a leader so for the sake of this tutorial and I guess for the convenience of not just this mod but just to show you guys I will try um, Kuril of Vladimirovich, the Tsar in exile following Nicholas II's death. So, this guy is our next portrait. Now, since this takes place in 1930, you also have to factor in the time frame of his appearance. Because sometimes portraits can end up, like right here, this is good. This is high quality. Um, it might need a little tuning here and there, but other than that, I could see this work for sure. 
Um, so what you can do is you can save the image. I'm going to save it on my desktop for the sake of convenience. And once that's saved, wherever it is, oh, there it is. So once that's saved, then what you're going to do is you're going to, um, once you pick out your leader, you can go here to polish it up more if it's, you know, if there's something wrong with it. Now this will also edit the scale because the scaling also depends on how the quality will look. Now if you go too much, the scaling, uh, if you go too much on the scale, the it'll look more cartoony and I would say more Hoi 4 vanilla style like, if you know what I mean. So we can always try it. Um, like I said, this isn't like, this is more of like an optional thing, but unless of course, if it is a bad quality portrait, which this right here ain't, but just for the sake of it, uh, for an example, I will do it. Now, sometimes portraits like this might be too big, so you always have to resize them down. I would recommend going below 1000 pixels um, in size. Like, see right here, this perfect example. This portrait is too big. It will not fit on this website and nor can they actually convert it because of its size. So what we can do is we are going to open this up. I'm going to open mine in paint.net, but you can use GIMP or Photoshop uh, depending on how you do. You could theoretically use paint, um, Microsoft Paint, but I wouldn't recommend it because it's not really a professional uh, software much like these. At least in my opinion. But you, as long as you do you and you follow the steps accordingly, you should be okay. Now, resizing the picture. Now, as you can clearly see, it's 2,000 pixels. We got to change that. So, what we could actually do is, why don't we do 900 for the sake of trying to avoid any future disaster when it comes to ensuring the quality. Also, be careful. Um, this is an important tip too. If you're, if you are trying to size a portrait here, you can do it, and Photoshop will do its best to try and preserve it. But if you stretch it far beyond its limit, it might not look as good. It and that goes for pretty much most software. Um, as you can see, the portrait is uh, done now. Like I said, you can use this. Like, for the sake, I will use it, only because it is a good example. Um, also, make sure it says replicate, or you'll probably see it says that, but I don't know. I don't really know the settings too much on this, but just for keeping that in mind for future reference. Um, your next bet, obviously, you have to cut it out. Now, you could do it erasing wise but that is way more time consuming tedious and just a waste of energy altogether it's always best that you try to find other ways around that so now that i have his portrait cut out it is time to paste and when it comes to pasting like i said follow those uh, formulas as closely as you can but if you can't well that depends on the portrait that you're making. Every portrait is different. It doesn't matter what others say or doesn't matter how things happen. It's just, it's a simple fact that every single portrait is different. So remember this formula. I like to leave obviously a tiny space, like a very like one pixel space if I can above. I mean, that's how I do it. Uh, but the rest of the formula falls through just so long as it's not you know constraining certain things so i would safely say um like i said i'm gonna put him right about here also make sure he is centered or he or she depending on the portrait that you're actually making um because if it's not that centered then you're gonna suffer consequences in terms of like, I've seen portraits that are either over here or over here, or maybe he's too short or something. You really shouldn't do that. So like right now, this portrait, if I can just 
drop down slightly. That portrait works. That is the right fit. So now we can begin the process of doing the other stuff. But you also notice um, parts of the face are a little bright. Now, in order to fix that, um, I'll show you in a sec. But basically what you're going to do is in these layers, uh, I'm making a folder, a subfolder, which will allow... No, it's a folder, not a subfolder, sorry. This will allow you to edit skin, metals, uniform, and pretty much the color bases of the rest of him, including hair. Now, what this is going to do is, since these are stored in a um, specific file under this area, this won't be ported as a file, at least unless if you do something like that, but still. So once that's done, once you have like the hair, the iris, or the eyes, depending on how, and I spelt that wrong. I'm typing so damn fast. Uh, once that's done, then we'll move on to brightness and contrast, which will be very important because brightness and contrast is going to be one of those things that will affect the overall quality of your portrait. This means um, you are going to have certain things pop up more than others. Now, I do have my own file when it comes to doing like this particular task. Like, for example, what, you, what I do is I select everything here, making sure that the entirety of the cutout is selected to avoid any leakage, because I've seen portraits do that too, and it is very annoying if colors bleed. Um, so what my basic skin um, <coughs> is right here, uh, 139, 1000, no, 100, and then 90. These, this is the color code that I go by whenever I'm making skin. Now, what you're going to do is um, you would basically color over. But before I do that, I have to quickly discuss brightness and contrast. I've completely misstepped. So brightness and contrast, plain and simple, will affect the brightness and contrast of your portrait. How so? Well, if I do this, um, you will notice that the edges could go lighter or darker. Now you could also just slightly modify it, not too much to the point where it's going to be like like a big gray blob, which that could happen, theoretically. Um, you could also do brightness, um, just adjust it slightly. Although since um, this wasn't too bad, I am going to adjust it a small, like minus 10. And then if you go back, you'll see the difference. Uh, this is the original, this is the one. So that will help you a lot in terms of everything. Now, thankfully, because this is a high quality portrait, I didn't have to worry too much about adjusting it, but note for the future, if you encounter a portrait that is far brighter than this, you're probably gonna need to do one, two, one, like basically multiple volleys of brightness and contrast adjustments. It is won't be easy, but once you've got the hang of it, you're all set. Um, also, before you color anything, I would recommend putting this on overlay as your default um, layer setup and the blend style of what this is going to do, because these are the blend styles. Now, you can, you know, subtract from the mustache, the eyes later, but what you're going to do is... You're just going to color the skin very basically. Now, sometimes, like I said, this is why I, st I always talk about the brightness and contrast, is because, as you can clearly see right here, the portrait is bleeding in not in a good way in some parts. It looks awfully bright, but if you want to work with this, you can. But just so that you know, like I said, it will affect the future quality of portraits. Um, now you don't have to worry too much about the dark areas over here, just so long as you have like the basic layers and the basic 
layout of the skin colorized. Now what you're going to do next is you're going to zoom in, not maybe not too close because then you're going to get grids. Um, but what I would like to do, what I do is, um, depending on the eye size, anywhere between 3 or 7 pixels, you can just do this. Now these will um, decolorize or at least erase the layer that you made. These layers will um, blank out these areas, preserving them for the hair layer, if you will. Because the hair layer is something completely different, and that will affect other aspects. Now, the hair layer will be the mustache or beard, depending on the character that you have. Like uh, Joseph Stalin, Nicholas II, Karl Marx... Um, you know, all those famous people. Now, once that's done, now sometimes the layer may not, it still looks off. He still looks pale. And I'll tell you why. It's because there are multiple layers of skin that we're going to do. This will help add more depth to the actual thing. Now, if you're still not happy with the first layer, here's what you can do. You can do color rebalance, add a slight hint of red, and a slight hint of yellow. This will make the skin a little more natural looking. So if you go undo and redo, you'll see that it stands out a little better. Now, that also depends, again, on the contrast and stuff of portraits, because once those portraits lose certain kinds of um, structure to their brightness and contrast, it could be very hard to reverse and sometimes in worst case scenarios, uh, like if you mess up a process or if you accidentally blend layers, you may have to start again. But work at your own pace. Don't, don't let the portrait stress you out, basically. Now I have to reselect this because I accidentally clicked off. Um, now for the second layer of skin. You can keep this color Make sure it's overlay, obviously. Um, you will be affecting opacity in the next three layers. You won't have to do it much here because, well, that's the basic skin. But what you're going to do is uh, lower the size of your brush based on the size and the structure of that person's face. Now, it's okay if you find a little uh, leakage on certain other layers. You can just simply shave that down or shave it back now his cheeks and stuff look redder so what you're going to do is you're going to decrease it to about 50 but like i said it also depends on the portrait so always be vigilant as to what the portrait is going to look like now if you zoom out which this will also help you you can clearly see the changes in the layers this will help a lot now you don't have to do much here but if you really want to uh if you go back to the first layer and you let's say you know you want to make it even more realistic now don't do this because then you'll have red skin uh but don't do this because he'll look too pale so i would safely say uh lower the contrast again and you can do brightness but don't do uh -huh, this because then stuff will happen but if you do that this will happen it's always best to um, put the areas where they should and ensure that doesn't get messed up now for the sake of this I probably should have did this earlier but I might actually do another layer of this contrast thing again uh, another round of it because of the fact that this portrait is kind of bright now granted, this isn't the brightest portrait I've seen, but it is very annoying. Like, it's annoying enough warranting the change. Now, I'm going to try this color again, just to see if I can get it here. Now, this also depends on how many times you do this, although maybe I should actually reverse that. So, since the skin looks, I would say, better, uh, then we're going to move on to skin level three this will um you can actually pick which one to start with you can do the eye socket first or you can do the five o'clock which i have safely right here 
Now the five o'clock shadow, very simple, just color below the mustache and or beard. Or if you can't get it, if it's completely covered, maybe just do the small area down here and just move on. Now what you're gonna do is edit the layers opacity again. Make sure it's not too noticeable. I would say for this, go to 30. Or again, depending on the portrait's uh, look. Now you can, like if you seriously don't know what to do and you're still stuck on certain layers of detail, always zoom out by going uh, 100% because if you go to 100% you'll go here. So zoom out, go to 100% and do this. If you still don't know, despite the examples that I've seen, this will help you with perspective a lot. Um, so that's about it for that part. Now the next layer that we're going to do is level 4. Now this will be the eye socket. Now what I do is, you can use a blue, but you'll have to use color match. And obviously, you need to edit the opacity, and I'll tell you why. This, this crap will happen. He'll have blue eye for a bit, or at least the blue eye sockets. Now what you're going to do is, this is a good opportunity to repeat this step because if you don't some of the color might actually leak onto the eye color so it's always best to do this part it doesn't have to be perfect but i would just safely say make it to the point where it actually looks like an eye socket so once that's once these parts are done once you've shaved them back and make sure it's above the um jawline well jawline but also um the side bone. I forget the name, sorry. Um, so you're going to do color balance, and then you're going to do this, or you can do this. Although I would say do this because it looks more hollow, like it looks like a, like a more hollow area of the skull. Now, then, what you're going to do, opacity, I would go maybe 10%. Now, like I said, if you're still not sure, go back. And if you look very closely, and if you're still um, struggling, you can do 20%. As you can see, that looks more natural of a uh, skull. Although I think I'm going to do 10%, but you can clearly see that if I check, uncheck the blue, there's not much there. But if I check it, you'll see a little fragment of uh, remains left. Now, obviously the uniforms and such is going to be a different thing. I might actually do that in part two. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, now, since his hair color, according to historical documentation, is brown, I would say, all right, so you're going to go to select to the hair layer, and you're going to, oops, wrong color. So we're going to get a brownish one. Now, this brown right here doesn't look too natural, or at least not natural to his extent. So what we're going to do is, if there are any other uh, leakage, just simply shave it back, like you did with the uh, layers of skin, some parts. And obviously the eyebrows or anywhere else that would have hair because without it, it just wouldn't work. Um, also, I forgot to mention, when you're doing like eyebrows or something and you don't really have, um, like it's always good to adjust the size. Like right now, I kind of screwed up. So what you're gonna do is something like this. Try not to leak onto the skin too much because then that will cause it to bleed uncontrollably. Um, so yeah, the, something like this. But then what you're gonna do is you're gonna use brightness and contrast again. Now if you do this, obviously you're gonna make this guy blonde as all hell. But if you adjust a little bit, you'll make it to the right amount of darkness for his hair. Now, 
I'm going to do contrast 30 and brightness minus 30. This should help. Now you could also, if you want to make them look a little older, you could do like this. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is just 80% opacity. So that this way it's, you know, balanced out. Um, actually, you know what? You know what? I'll do 75. So now there's his hair. Now his face is coming along really nicely. So all that's left for the facial area, eye color. Now we're going to use this blue again, but only for the purpose of his eye color. Um, wrong tool, sorry. So now this is not the kind of blue you should go for. This is not a natural blue. So your first bet into fixing this, and you, like I said, you can go back some ways for perspective. I would do color balance. Now that looks better, but it's still too bright. So what you can do is overlay. Um, well, opacity, sorry. So you can do that. Now, again, if you still don't know, back up, see the perspective, uncheck, and there you have a colorized picture. Now the uniform is a bit of a tricky one because, well, look at all this detail. This is, this, the uniform in any portrait is going to take you longer, especially, especially if it has metals like this. Now, lucky for me, I wasn't able to get the entirety of the metals right there. So I think rather than just making a part two, I might as well just uh, do this to help. Uh, you guys along. Uh, so we're going to go back to the first layer. This might be a little longer than it should, but that's okay. Um, I got time. Now what you're going to do is color this. Now it may look orangey at first. Do not worry. This is for the effect of the gold. This has nothing to do with the final. Well, it does have something to do with the final material, but it will not be the final material. Uh, same with the buttons. You can make those gold too. Uh, same with parts of the uh, straps or the shoulder pads, whatever you like to call them. Or there's this little rope that's coming down from his uniform. That's something to do as well. Now, once you've gotten everything, once you've gotten all of the metals and or the gold parts, which I think I might have missed some back here here on the right side of his neck even though it is dark it should be done anyway because um if you don't then you could risk losing some uh quality or quality control for it so i would say probably something like that now then what you're going to do is you can there are a few ways you can do this you can do the color balance but that would be too bright or you can just simply do this this makes the gold look more natural. It's not because it's orange. It's because of the opacity. It's a perspective. It plays a game with your eyes, basically. So since the gold is majority done, let's continue. Now, I would safely say his uniform is dark blue. So what I'm going to do is I will reuse this blue a lot, only because it would be easier for me. Um... But how it works is I have the uniform itself in a dark blue color. This will help make it more like a uniform, especially from back in the day. Now, what you're going to do is color balance. You could do blue. Um, if you want, you could change the style of this although as you can clearly see I might I accidentally skipped over some parts uh, that'd be good if he has like a brown uniform but for the sake of this uh, I'm just going to do like a basic modification of this one uh, hold on a sec I think I screwed something up sorry um, so, I'll do this process again very quickly. 
Don't worry. Uh, but if you want to follow along again, I guess this could be a good review for you. So uh, basically, once you've gotten all the stuff, again, color balance, dark blue, done. Uh, sometimes, well, again, you could do this or whatnot. But again, everything solely depends on the portrait itself. So since we're done with that, let's make some other layers. So this will be the cloth. The cloth will go from his shoulder. How I make the cloth? Well, the most basic color to use is white. Uh, what kind of white? I would safely say use this kind of white. It's not really an, well, it's kind of an egg white, but it's, it's very, uh, it's a strange tannish white. So what you're going to do is, same thing for all the others, pretty much a majority of what, how I make my portraits. You put the color in, lower the opacity to the point where it looks like an actual cloth. Again, if you're not sure, just do this. Now, I think I'm going to lower this to 20 because that seems balanced out. Uh, other than that, the other parts of his uniform, like for example, there's also these areas. So what you can do is right above the gold layer, you can use gold again and edit a different way. So for example, uh, again, we'll use this. Also, please make sure that you're trying not to impede on the pieces themselves. Otherwise, you might actually uh, have an issue with stuff like that. So you can do like that too, like how I just did it. Then what you're going to do is go to here. Now, if you go 50%, you're going to do the same gold like you did as the other, everyone else. What I would do, I because if this is a shoulder pad, you go to 25 or 20%, depending on how it is. And you could do stuff like this. Just edit it around. But um, I don't know if this part would work in particular, but I would say that looks good enough for the most part. Uh, shaving back the uniform color back down there a little bit. And I forgot to mention, uh, when you're in the uh, gold layer, uh, always make sure that you've got like necklaces and other accessories to ensure a high quality style portrait. Uh, there are metals down here, um, so I will just quickly say, since that there's not much, you can skip around some colors. You could do this. Actually, no. Make another layer for that. I'm sorry. So you do another layer, metals, and then for right here, shoulder pads, just so that you keep track of what layer's which. And if you do shoulder pads, it's go black and white again. So for metals... Uh, pretty easy. Just do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. If you want to include some red in there, you can. Uh, and then once all that's done, overlay. Opacity. And we are done. Oh, except for one thing, sorry. This will be the shadow. What I like to do, drop shadow, distance uh, one, angle 45 degrees. You could use global too, but I don't usually use that. And you could also increase the size of the shadow if you want, uh, depending on how it is. Uh, I would just say keep it at five for safety. Uh, Bavel does this, in case you're wondering. Don't do that. And that's it. That's all that there is to it. I hope that this uh, video helped you guys with making this ACSW style portrait. Uh, a Cold Steel World, for those who don't know. Um, 
So that's how you make it. I'll uh, leave resources in the description down below once I updated them. And, well, they should be updated after this video. But, yeah, so like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. Um, and tell me your thoughts. If you are still, after all this, confused, leave a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Or you can hit me up on Discord. Um, you'll be able to talk with me on the server down below. So for now, have a good day, and God of Gold is out.